Guys, we've got an interesting situation here. Cell washer. It's got a problem. Not spinning. Let's take a look. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Guys, this is the Helmer Ultra Cell Washer Ultra CW, and this guy, it's got a problem. It's given a lot of attack errors, and it doesn't want to spin. So I figured this is a perfect opportunity to show you guys around about what's going on with it and what we can do for regular maintenance. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Guys, this is the Helmer Ultra CW. It's a cell washer. I know it looks like a centrifuge, and it is. But a cell washer is a special kind of centrifuge because in the back you're going to have a drain for liquids coming out and you're going to have a connector for saline because this guy this kind of centrifuge spins up blood but it adds saline to the blood and what that does is it thins it out and as it spins, it collects usually the more solid, heavier particles like red blood cells into a glob down at the bottom, which can be used for testing for a whole variety of different things. But in order to do that, you have to wash the blood, which is what it's called. When you add saline to the blood mixture, it spins it up, it separates it out, and the saline will just kind of spill over. And a lot of the things like plasma, which is 90% of blood, the plasma will spill out and it collects up here in this ring and it drains down out the back. So what you're left with is ultra condensed blood cells in the test tubes. So the tachometer error that I've got with this guy, as soon as you boot it up, it gives you a tach error. And that's because it doesn't want to spin or it doesn't want to spin freely. And it was completely locked up. So after I went ahead and started pulling some stuff apart, you can see that now I got it moving. We'll get into that later. So the lid, which I have detached here, you can see that the saline actually comes in here through the tube, spills into the top of your rotor, which then you can see all these little down shoots. This is a down shoot, this is a down shoot. So the saline comes in through here and it spins down conveniently immediately into the, the test tubes that are full of open blood. So it'll spin, it'll collect in the test tubes, thins it out, condenses it, the extras will spin into this ring, which you can see, guys, we're gonna go into the anatomy of this device, and one of the first things I do with these devices is I disconnect the lid. So there's four screws right there that comes off mind you there is a saline tube that goes to the lid we have the separator ring or the collection ring which does have a little tiny downspout right there that guy just pulls out and then you're going to have a seal this silicone seal right here and that will be hiding the smaller metric allen fasteners that go around the perimeter of the ring. So this guy will get pulled off and then on the back we pull off the rear panel and that would be just four perimeter screws here. This door here has got a quarter turn and it opens up and that exposes your peristaltic pump which is what actually adds the saline to your blood cells. So down here, there's two fasteners which retain your bowl. So take those two fasteners out. We've got all the perimeter screws here that were removed. Next, your rotor will come out. And that just comes out, it just pulls right out. Next, you have your rotor hub. Now this guy can be a little bit of a pain in the butt because there are two little screws with two different dimensions of metric allens. So the top one is gonna be this guy right here. 
it's gonna be threaded right here into the top. And beneath that, this guy actually retains the hub. So you can just fits down in there. Metric Allens for both of them. Then what I did is I actually clipped on a set of vice grips to this guy and I lifted up basically the entire machine. And then I had somebody else take a punch and smack the motor, which you can see that this guy has a slight taper to the inside of the bore and it will come free. So this is called the rotor hub and the rotor hub has a series of magnets on the underside. You see that? There's two, there's two, there's two close together. Now the magnets, they are for a Hall effect sensor and they do tell the speed. But one of the convenient things of having uneven spaced magnets, you can see two of them right there, two of them right there in close proximity. And then over here in the distance is two is that gives it also a sense of position or direction by, you know, pulse pulse space or space pulse pulse. Sometimes they use the magnets up here to identify the type of rotor that's installed. But this guy here, those are magnets installed under there. Underneath the rotor hub, you're gonna have a silicone seal. This is usually where we have problems with this device. The silicone seal will go bad and when it goes bad, you'll actually have saline and blood that will get down there on your motor, which causes it to seize up, which is what I completely expected this guy to do. Once you get the rotor hub out, you have the spindle for your motor exposed. Once you have those two fasteners out, then the entire bowl will just slide out, like so. Too easy. I'll let you guys see the inside of the machine. Now, I was immediately suspicious because after I took that off, you can see that my motor does in fact want to spin and the bearings seem to be in really good condition on this guy. This right here is going to be your Hall effect sensor. It's part of the speed sensor, which is on the cap of the motor. And it is what reads the motor hub as it spins around. So they say whenever you get a tack error, what you gotta do is you shut the power off and you spin it, you give it some inertia and then you turn it on and those magnets going past the Hall effect sensor will actually clear the error code. You can see that this motor seems to be spinning really well. The motor itself might not be bad. We still don't know the condition of the Hall effect sensor right here because if they're getting this error code even reasonably often, then it's probably best that we replace this whole assembly. You can see the motor itself is actually doing its job. This here is the front control panel. There are three fasteners underneath, metric, allens, and then it will come off. But mind you, there's gonna be two ribbon cables that are gonna be on the back side of it. And they're gonna have keeper springs, which retain them. They're very easy to remove. Just take a small, tiny flathead you can see right here a keeper spring that's holding this guy on. I keep those ones on exactly where they're at. So anyway, let's go through what happened here. The motor itself was froze up and when I removed everything that was creating stress in the bowl of cavity, it seemed to be spinning just fine now. That was the first problem is the motor was completely seized up. I could not spin it whatsoever. Now I can. You can see here that my seal was kind of glued to the motor itself. And as it spun and pulled up, it ripped part of my seal. So the seal's gotta get changed out no matter what. You can see that. No matter what, the seal is bad. But the motor itself might also be bad. So I might have to test that Hall effect sensor to see how strong it is. I will probably do that with an oscilloscope, check it out. I would imagine this motor is probably 1500 or so dollars. That motor looks like it's fine. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at how this thing functions. I've got an IEC power inlet here and the wiring goes from this guy immediately to your main switch. This is the main switch because 
it disconnects mains completely. From the back of your main switch, your wiring goes back to an isolation transformer, which is why this thing is so crazy heavy. Not only is this a beefy little motor, but your isolation transformer right there isolates all the electrical components in here from mains, which is a good, good deal, guys. You're talking about saline, blood, things that are normally kind of conductive. This guy is going to make sure that even if saline gets down in here on these components, you're gonna be protected. You're not gonna get electrocuted. So that's a really good thing. And it looks like all the lead wires and everything are done very nicely. It's all zip tied up. It's a good deal. So the motor here is a three phase motor. That's its wire that goes down here. And the reason I know it's a three phase motor is because I have a red, a black. Let's see, that would be these ones right here. I have a red, black, and yellow wire, which go to the motor from this board. Now this board here is going to be a frequency converter board, which is kind of like a VFD, uh, variable frequency drive. I have a power supply board. This board down here is a fluid management board. But one of the things I want you guys to take notice of, see all this mass of wires? All these wires come up here to a interlock for the door. So it will shut off everything if this guy is open during operation. So it's a hardwired disconnect to the power supply, to your fluid management board. It's actually designed really well. The mains comes in here, it goes into a very beefy RF filter, and then it goes out to various boards. That doesn't matter. Let's go over some more of the components. So the braking resistor is right here. It's an absolute beast of a braking resistor. And these white wires that are on top of it, those go to a thermistor, which is monitoring the temperature. You can see right there is the temperature monitoring of the braking resistor. It is an absolute beast. So the braking resistor, it takes one of the phases and it pulses it through that resistor and that creates resistance, electrical resistance on the motor, which causes it to slow down really quickly. Over here, you can see that I have a peristaltic pump. I have a flow meter, which is back there, a little guy right there, so it can sense if it's got flow. This little doohickey plunger right here, see that guy? You can actually hear it. This is an out of balance disconnect or a sensor, I guess you can call it a sensor. So what it does is if your load is unbalanced and it's sitting there and it's shaking, as soon as it gets a signal pulse from this guy because it closes the contacts of the micro switch, it shuts it down. You get an error code saying it's out of balance. And this guy right here is the main contactor for the motor. You can see right there, I get the incoming wires which are the brown, the white, and the black. The outgoing wires are gonna be your black, red, and yellow. So this is a hard disconnect for the motor. And it also is a hard connect for the motor. The wires over here, this black one, right here. This goes up to the Hall Effect sensor. And your Hall Effect sensor connects down here. See this wire, right? So the power supply is actually monitoring the Hall effect sensor. And this wire right here goes to your front panel, which is your control board. And your control board, here, let me pull it out. Your control board actually has the CPU. So as soon as it gets any of these logic signals, it will shut it down. It also monitors the speed of the motor and makes adjustments to your variable frequency drive based on what its registered speed is on that Hall effect sensor. Very nicely laid out, everything's right on the front. All these components look like they're in excellent condition. I'm gonna go ahead and get this guy fixed. This is electronic release solenoid. You can see the release lever right here. So if you ever can't get inside this guy because it maybe a, blows a component, melts a wire or whatever, you take out the three fasteners in the front panel, 
You pull the panel off and then you can depress this guy. It'll eject the lid and you can get your samples out. Anyway guys, that is a quick rundown of the Ultra CW cell washer by Helmer. It's a reliable unit. This guy here is about eight years old now and we have very few problems with them. But the problems I have had were locked up motors and that is simply because the saline gets down there, corrodes the bearings, locks it up. It's a total replacement of the motor but once you replace it, you do a speed check, you're good to go. Not too bad. Anyway guys, I know that seemed to be a little bit wordy, but I figured I'd take you on a uh, browse through this device. So maybe if you ever get this kind of error in the future, you'll be a little bit better informed on what to do with it. Thanks for watching guys.